Update. Am I the a-hole for turning down a Christmas dinner invitation from my mom's family? Original post. So I, 21 female, am currently in university and live on a dorm, using my own money and everything. My mom, 40 female, had me when she was 19. My dad joined the military to provide, and so he was gone most of the time. My parents split up when I was young, and my mom and dad moved across the country. My mom started dating again when I was a teenager, and it was like I became invisible. When she married Gregory, 50 male, it became even different. I grew really resentful when my mom had a new baby, and I'll admit that it wasn't healthy and neither was my attitude. When the time for university came, I got a good enough scholarship and moved out. I'm honestly surprised they noticed I was even gone. I've gotten two texts from my mom a year, happy birthdays and happy new years. Only this year did I get a third text, and that's just to announce I have a new baby sister. So I got an email the other day that was pretty much an invite to a Christmas dinner that they were hosting, and it seems like a lot of extended family are going to be there. I don't want to be there, so I declined the invite. Yesterday I got a phone call from my mom crying about me deciding not to come for the dinner and really wanting to see me. Then Gregory took the phone at all but called me an a-hole while scolding me. It's made me feel a little bad because she's still my mom, and I feel like I should just go for her sake. Now for the top advice before reading the updates. Not stay home. They weren't there for you when you needed them. That's literally a parent's job. Yep, not stay home. She's crying and he's mad because your absence at Christmas will raise a ton of questions about their parenting, or lack thereof, that they aren't comfortable answering because it'll make them look bad. I doubt it. The entire extended family knows, and they aren't hiding that I'm not part of the family according to my grandmother. And she's shown me Facebook photos where they've had captions like complete family to other stuff. And while my grandmother said she'd like me to reconcile, she thinks it's better for me if I don't. As much as I dislike Gregory, I do know him well enough to know that he does love my mom and hates seeing her cry. As for mom, I'm sure she wants to see me for me or because she feels bad, but that doesn't mean she deserves it. She didn't even invite me with a phone call or text, just an impersonal invite. I really do feel terrible for making her cry though, and do wish I hadn't done that. You didn't make her cry. She cried out of her own feelings of guilt, sadness, or whatever. You're not responsible for her feelings. Only text from your mom each year? No phone calls until now? Not stay home. You do what suits you. They've treated you like an acquaintance since she started dating and eventually married. It would be only normal for you to not wish to attend. Why waste a holiday with people who treat you that way? Your mother's husband's insults prove how he's felt all along. All the best to you. Not stay home. It is telling that you say the invitation is from my mom's family, rather than my mom or my family. Her actions made it so you don't consider yourself part of her family anymore. If your mother wants to reconnect, she needs to do the work of fixing her neglect of you when you were still a minor. And that takes more than an invitation to a family party, where they probably just want you there to play happy family and make them look good. Having said that, think about the damage control. You say the extended family will be there. Is there anyone where you do care about them or what they think about you? What will your mother and stepfather say about you to everyone if you aren't there? Not being there lets them control what is being said about you. Is this something you can live with? If, say, you like your grandparents and they will be there, having lunch with them the week before and talking to them, letting them know what happened to you, will let you control the narrative. My grandma will be there and she knows everything. She's the only one who I visit and even care about. She's shown me the Christmas cards and Facebook photos they've posted, and it's all in such a way that it's like that's been the only family my mom's ever had, and like it haven't existed. The relatives that'll be there are always commenting positive crap to them too. And now for the first update. So my mom's Christmas party went and passed this past Friday, and I figured I'd make this post as an update. Like I thought, my mom phoned me back because my grandma made her. She asked to meet me in person, but I said I didn't feel comfortable. She said she could bring Gregory or Grandma if it would help. I said hell no to Gregory, which surprised her, but I did agree to Grandma. After snow issues, we met in a coffee shop with Grandma claiming she would be a mediator. I looked at my post to see your guys' advice to, I don't know, guide me before I left? I admitted to Mom I didn't want to see her but thought this call would clear the air. I asked why barely only two texts a year. 
And she said Gregory told her that college kids didn't need their moms and would be interfering. I asked why she couldn't at least phone me to invite me. And she said Gregory told her sending an evite made me on the same level as the other relatives. And I would like being respected. That made no freaking sense to me. And I got so mad. I asked why the heck she even wanted me there when she would treat me like extended family. She told me when I was gone, and seeing how Gregory treated their kids made her realize she neglected me. She'd been going to therapy and wanted us to mend things. I pointed out listening to Gregory about me then was the dumbest possible thing she could do since he never liked me. I knew I'd start crying like a little witch, so I started ranting about how I'd rather not meet my half-siblings since I know I'd resent them. They don't deserve that. How my extended family also cast me out. How everyone blamed therapy not working on me. My mom was shocked, and even more shocked when grandma took my side in everything. I told her I was really sorry that I made her cry and it didn't make me feel better. She forgave me on that, but told me it wasn't my fault, and she deserved it. My mom asked if I'd ever come home, and I said that Gregory would either need to apologize or die. That was a bit harsh, since I don't want him to croak. So I said if he leaves forever is good too. My mom said she understood, started crying, apologized like a hundred times, and asked if she could text or phone me more often. I said sure, because it still makes me feel awful to see my mom cry. Since then, mom has texted me and called me every day but hasn't tried to force things. I did not go to the party since Gregory has not apologized. Grandma has been staying with them and things aren't too good between them. They had big fights over him refusing to say sorry and how they treated me and aren't talking. I don't want my mom's marriage to end for the sake of her other kids, but I can't lie, it feels good to not be ignored. Apparently mom wants to meet on Christmas or Christmas Eve, and as long as grandma comes, I let her but I don't know if we'll ever be close again. So thanks guys, your advice really did help and I'm feeling better mentally. Good job sticking to your boundaries. I'm happy your mom is showing growth in realizing what was wrong, and I hope your relationship improves even if you're not super close. Also, a hell yeah to your amazing grandma for sticking by your side and acting as a mediator. I hope you have a good Christmas, and that things keep getting better for you. Merry Christmas to you too. I don't know if things will ever get better, but her at least acknowledging she was wrong means something to me even if I don't know what it is. And I really do love my grandma, and I'm happy that other people think she's great too. Yeah, I'm loving your grandma too. But honestly, the first part of this update completely pissed me off. Gregory, Gregory, Gregory. I was thinking, does this mom have the basic common sense to wipe her butt after a dump? Or does she get slash follow Gregory's advice for that too? But she surprised me. She seems to genuinely want a relationship but is taking steps to make that happen. Best wishes, Opie. I'm glad that your mother is understanding that she did a disservice to you and agrees that she neglected you. That's showing a lot more understanding and contrition that many mothers will see on here manage. I'd encourage you to see if you can build a relationship with your mother now, one that probably won't include Gregory. If it's just painful for you, then you can cut it off. But it sounds like something more positive than that is possible. Please don't feel like you owe it to your past self to cut your mother off or keep her at arm's length, if she's a positive in your life now. I don't see myself ever being around her if grandma isn't there too. I'm happy that she knows she was wrong, but I don't know if I can trust her enough to give her a second chance to be my mom. And as for Gregory, I think she's finally gotten the message that I hate him. It sounds like your mom is in a really abusive and controlling relationship. Those are hard to get out from under her. While I'm not excusing her behavior, maybe try to see her in that light. And that her actually reaching out to you and willing to meet you on your terms is a huge step for someone in her position. She didn't start treating me bad when she and Gregory got together. That started before, and it treated her like an angel when I lived with them. Maybe it's changed, but that's how it was. Now for the last update. So I did meet with my mom. Grandma came to us for instructions, for lunch. We didn't talk about Gregory or anything. It was just a short meeting over coffee. We just talk about school, the engineering program I'm in, guys I've dated and stuff. I guess it was nice to talk about myself even if it was awkward. She did ask me to spend more time with grandma and that made grandma smirk. Which means grandma kept her promise about never revealing we hang out. I paid for mom as a gift and she gave me an old baby photo of me that she got redeveloped as a gift. I thought that was nice. 
I let her hug me goodbye. She didn't cry this time, so I don't feel like crap. It still feels weird, and I know it will for a long time. Maybe forever. It's hard letting go of hurts, but it is what it is. Hope you guys have a good Christmas. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for destroying family Christmas? I've been with my wife for about five years. Married two, and we have a one-year-old son. My mom is the type of person who doesn't like change, doesn't like new people, and keeps to herself. That being said, she isn't controlling and doesn't seem to care what her kids do with their lives. But she doesn't like when she feels things are pushed on her. She is also someone who will just keep doing what she does without thinking. So when she continued to buy me lavish gifts, but nothing for my wife or baby, I didn't think it was malicious. But it hurts my wife that even after marriage, my mom wasn't buying her gifts. I sat down with my mom and explained this. My mom was totally shocked and couldn't believe my wife expected a gift. I tried to explain that my wife is part of the family now, but my mom is upset and said she has three kids and shouldn't have to pretend my wife is her kid. She really seemed surprised, so I do think that was genuine. And she kept saying how mortified she would be if her husband expected gifts from her parents and that she wouldn't be with such an entitled child. Finally, I told my mom to just stop. It is okay if she has a difference of opinion, but she is hurting my wife and it needs to stop. My mom thought about it for a couple of months, talked to my sisters, who said she should just suck it up and buy gifts for our partners. And her ultimate decision was that she didn't want to host Christmas anymore. I thought she was bluffing, so I ignored it for months. I realized she was serious and said, fine, we can do it at my house, but she didn't want to come. I mailed her a small gift as a test and she mailed it back. Finally, I was like, screw it, and did Christmas with my wife's sisters and their partners. Both of my sisters were miserable the whole time, and one cried which I thought was crazy dramatic. My mom was on vacation and had her phone off. The sister who cried finally blew up that my wife and I ruined Christmas and ruined our family and she left early. Her and my other sister called our mom later and finally got her to answer her and begged her to do a normal Christmas again. And my mom said she feels like now that we are all getting married and having kids, it shouldn't be her problem anymore and she will think about it but is leaning towards me. Now my sisters are angry and feel that I ruined family Christmas. Not stay home. Your family sounds exhausting. Getting a present for the partners of your children isn't that strange. And frankly, it's weird that your mom hadn't considered it before. And your sister going to hysterics because your mom went on vacation and wasn't there seems ridiculous. Everyone needs to calm down. Maybe consider heading out of town with your wife next year at escaping the holiday drama. This. Also, your child's partner of five years slash wife of three years and your own grandchildren aren't new people. They're family. The mother is a manipulative witch and the sisters are terribly influenced by their mom. I thought the mom sounded like she had some sort of processing disorder or was otherwise new or divergent. This would explain a lot. I could overlook no gifts for your wife, maybe, but none for your child? That's the much bigger issue. To accept lavish gifts if the baby gets nothing really bugs me. Newsflash, your mother absolutely is controlling. You just never noticed before because you were staying in line. Your sisters are still under the thumb, which is why they're reacting badly to your absolutely normal and reasonable request, and your mother's absolutely abnormal and unreasonable response. But that's their problem, not yours. Raising a kid is hard enough without trying to parents grow adults too. Stick to your guns. Either your wife and child are included in family Christmas, or family Christmas will be just you, your wife, and your child. Let the rest of them sort themselves out. Not day home. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to host Christmas and ruining my husband's dream? So my husband, 31 male, has always loved Christmas and everything even remotely related to it. While I, 31 female, don't really care. Since my family is not Christian nor do they live in this country, we usually end up spending the holidays with his family. He has always lived in a large household and everyone there shares the same enthusiasm for Christmas he has, which always makes it fun. The problem is that now my husband said that he wants us to host Christmas at our house the next year. And I was like, okay, sure. Until he clarified he meant that I had to host it. 
prepare the dinner and do all the grunt work. Now I have no idea what goes into Christmas. My family is from a different religion, and my childhood only consists of me and my dad. So holidays have never been a huge deal for me. I don't know how to do all the stuff required. He had already told them we'd be hosting Christmas, but I got mad and said, "How can you say that without even asking?" So I told him clearly that it's not my responsibility to host Christmas for your family, since I really don't care one way or another. But now he is accusing me of ruining his lifelong wish, and he ended up telling his mother about it. So now my mother-in-law and sister-in-laws are blowing up my phone by saying why am I being such a grinch? He has been sulking ever since we came back last night. I'm firm on my stance, but I'm still wondering since it's just a one-time thing if I should just suck it up. Not today, home. Why can't he do the work? What are you, his employee? Exactly. His lifelong dream is to sit back at host while his wife does all the work. Not today, home. I think it is actually. Yep. Opie, you are not day home, and you would be justified taking a nice vacation for yourself Christmas weekend, while your husband scrambles to fulfill the promises he had no intention of fulfilling himself. But if you don't want to do that, host a potluck Christmas and spend your time coordinating what others will bring. Tell your dear husband you're on it, but you'll have to delegate work to him. Then make him clean and decorate the house while you tell which relative to bring which food. You'll still have to work supervising, but you'll make it clear to him and everyone else that someone who doesn't celebrate Christmas should not be expected to be a servant to people who do. Not day home. I knew it. I freaking knew it. I knew the moment I read a title that you were going to be doing all the work. If he wants to host, he can freaking cook, set up the damn table, clean and all that with you. And then telling on her to mommy was also predictable. Yep. I love Christmas. My family go all out every year. It is the best. We start planning six months out, all the games, menu, etc. But the key word is we. Every single family member pitches in with cooking, decorating, childminding, and the cleanup afterwards. There is no way I would do a full Christmas with no help, or only help from the women in the family. Opie's husband is way out of line by demanding this, and to then send his mother and his sister after Opie. He is absolutely an a-hole.